Welcome everyone, Sam Mackay here from Enterprise DNA. Now, I want to go through some averaging um, visualizations in this particular example, okay? And so what we're going to do is we're going to um, keep it short and sweet in this one because it's actually not too difficult, especially with some of the tools that we've created at Enterprise DNA and also the logic if you understand uh, iterating functions well, especially, you know, in particular average x in this case it's not um you know it's this is this is not too difficult and it should be some of the some of the earliest stuff that you work through when when um uh when learning power bi okay now averaging okay so when we can when we want to average something we can do it um in quite a versatile way inside of power bi um, because of the formula pattern that you the formula patterns that you can utilize to make this happen okay so the key, first thing to remind yourself always, and this is just essential, this is DAX 101, is that you have to evaluate what is the current context of the calculation, okay? And so what, what is that? What do I mean by context? Well, it's what's selected in your particular report. In this particular case, the context is 2017. It could be 2017 in March, um, July, it could be 2017 July, but also this particular customer or this grouping of customers, one, two, three, four, five, that is your context, right? Okay. So once you know that, then you are able to then understand, okay, well, based on that context, this is what my formula is calculating. Okay. So what I want to do is I want to create a few averaging formulas here. Okay. And so um, I'm going to create a new measure. But before I do that, I'm going to show you, you know, literally how I create measures um, these days inside of Power BI. I don't actually write them out as much anymore because I have the analyst hub. This is, this is our own internally built application. And within here, I've got a document. So we have a range of different apps. Our main one, you know, one main one I use a, like a huge amount. Um, actually, I use a lot of them all the time, but the DAX cleanup is probably the most used um, just because it speeds up my development like crazy. And so within here, I've created um, some templates and I've got a template called averaging um, over timeframes, okay? And so within here, I have my, my formula. I can just go copy code, and then I'm going to then quickly create all of these measures, okay? So um, in this particular case, I'm gonna go, um, see I've got sort of like a placeholder here. In this particular case, I'm gonna go average sales per, let's go month and year, okay? Let's go month and year here. Okay, so we'll just improve this a little bit. average sales per month okay then what you can also do once you've got that in there is you can come in here and let's just let's just create these other ones as well because it's the same formula pattern which we'll go over in a second so average per day and in this particular case I'm going to I'm going to put the dates I know some of you might think okay you don't actually have to put the date there because the date table is usually by day but just you know in terms of how I like to do things I like to be a little bit more thorough and and clear so that everyone sort of knows what's going on here um, especially if they're not as familiar with Power BI so I like to put that in there and then I'm going to go year here okay oh I've got to change the name okay so that is how long it takes to honestly create these sort of insights inside of Power BI if you have your model set up correctly right okay and so what I can do is I can then drag these particular insights into my table and we can have a look at what they're actually showing before sort of going through the logic of the um, of the video, okay? Logic of the actual, um, sorry, results, results. Now, um, what we'll also do while I'm, while I'm here is just get some formatting done up of these particular results. And it's quite interesting, like it is quite interesting what is happening here and how we need to actually fix it, right? Because you're probably thinking, okay, well, these are pretty weird results, but they're not actually that weird when you think about it, okay? They're not. Um, it's just a matter of, and this is where understanding the initial context, but also the context that you are generating within your formula itself is just super crucial, right? Okay. Okay. Cool, okay, and then I'm gonna bring this year one in as well. Okay, so what is actually going on here at each of these different steps? And this is what we're gonna spend a little bit of time reviewing, okay? So average sales per day. 
So what's happening is within Average X, you place a table. It could be a physical table, it could be a virtual table. In this particular case, I'm using a virtual table and um, it is creating a list of each of the different dates. Now, what's happening here though, and you see why we're getting such a large amount when we're looking at average sales per day, and this, this also sort of comes down to what you want to show, and we've got to be very clear on that, is you see that this is basically the total sales amount divided by two. So what's likely happening here is that this particular customer, Edward Wright, has made only two transactions, and the um, values date in this particular formula is only bringing a list of two dates to this particular formula. And so it's going, okay, the first the first date of the transaction, um, calculating the total sales, the second date, and calculating the total sales, and then basically averaging up um, two days worth of sales, okay? And I would also suspect that those sales were probably in the same month because if you look at average sales per month, that we are getting this in, um, one of these months, right? Well, we're getting exactly the same amount um, as total sales. Okay, so let's, why don't we you know, try and evaluate this a little bit more, okay? So we can uh, we can have a look at this transaction here. And so this is a good auditing um, technique. So total transactions, okay? And I'm just gonna go count rows of the sales table, okay? And then instead of like actually putting this in a visualization, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to put this in the tooltip of the visual. Okay, so if we come here, how many transactions? Two transactions, right? Okay, so let's let's go to the second person. Three transactions. Okay, so it makes sense that you know these numbers are adding up um, to here. Now, when we go to this particular um, result, right? When we go to this particular result, we're now trying to evaluate. Um, how many uh we're now going through a list of all the months and years that transactions um took place okay and we're trying uh, and then so it's just basically so in this particular case it looks like it's only returning one particular date okay it's only returning one particular date and and if we look down the list it looks very very similar so it looks like a lot of these transactions were only happening in um you know in in sort of singular months in, the, in this particular case and the same for the year now look at how all these numbers change when i actually take off well it's sorry it's because the current context is in, is in july here so that's not actually very helpful um when i take that off okay now this makes a little bit more sense right and this is again it's just so it's, understanding your context is so crucial here right okay so this makes a lot more sense because we've got a lot more data okay so what we're looking at here is average sales per day. So it looks like, okay, Wayne Johnson had nine transactions. Okay, so this makes a bit more sense, right? 50,000 divided by nine equals around about that number. Okay, and then it looks like, okay, these transactions were spread over a number of different months. And that's why we have an average per month of 7,216. In terms of the year though, 50,000 is the same because we still have some context on the year here, okay? And so what's happening is that this particular year is only ever able to evaluate to one year, just like that month was evaluating to only one month every time because we had, we actually, and I didn't notice this, which is ridiculous considering I was explaining for you that you have to understand what your current, your initial context is. But um, this is how, this is how Power BI can trip you up at times. You need to, this one didn't, was only returning the same result every time because of the um, selection I had in the month and name, uh, in the month month name column here or the month name slicer okay now if i take off this year you know these numbers are going to change again right and it's going to make a lot more sense because now we're looking at average sales per year so what we're doing in this particular result here is that we are now getting being able to list an entire set of years not being determined by anything in the slicer here and then averaging up those sales by year okay so hopefully i've um detailed how this averaging formula works like average per day average per month average per year okay this is um one way that you can represent information and just out of you know just out of interest say you wanted to okay so say for instance you got total sales here this is only working out how many sales the average on days where a sale was made if you wanted to if you wanted to work out okay what is the average literally per day regardless of when a transaction was made 
well then what you need to do is you need to make sure that in this average per day table area that you make sure that you are able to retrieve an entire list of dates for a particular year okay that's that's where you know utilizing this technique is not actually going to work and so what you need to do is something like this calculate table no actually all except is what you need to use all except so we want to go dates okay and then we want to go print year okay let's just make sure this works actually i think it's my bad here probably what we want to do what we want to do is we want to do something like this uh, i'll show you I'll show you so what we want to do is go okay let's work out our total sales so we want to actually change tact a bit and then we want to go count rows dates this is probably just as that you know this is probably actually easier so this is saying okay well 500 divided by how many days in the current context okay and so again you could ever play around with this a little bit um you know just to make sure maybe it was you want to just average days within you know the context is key here that's that's sort of like the, the the key breakdown okay so but in terms of just your general averaging technique which is really really flexible this is you know going back to where we were at this is you know this is how you can do it okay this is the same technique that you can use over and over again and it's totally flexible like if i come in here and i want to get all of these particular results but i want to do it by product now I can do that very easily all i need to do is come down here and choose something like another another column from my um you know from my particular um model from like a different lookup table or a different segment of my data and then i can get results based on that as well okay let's round things off there um went into a bit of a bit of detail there which i think was good but this is this is some you know really solid stuff that you want to be implementing you know pretty early on and uh, it's going to make a big difference to how you lo learn and understand um, especially DAX formulas um, um, as you move on with Power BI. Okay, take care. Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to Enterprise DNA TV. If you enjoyed the content covered in this particular tutorial, please throw the video a like. It really helps us and we really appreciate it. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Enterprise DNA TV channel. Uh, we have a huge amount of content coming out all the time from myself and a range of content creators, uh, all dedicated to improving the way that you use Power BI and the Power Platform. Lastly, check out Enterprise DNA's website, plenty of resources and further learning that you can access very easily. All the best, take care.